Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about catching exceptions in Java. More specifically, we're going to talk about using something called the try catch blocks. And basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to be able to monitor for specific errors that might occur in our program. And if those errors occur, then we can actually just um, handle them. So if, a pro if an error happens that would normally cause our program to stop executing, we can handle that error and keep executing the program. So I'm gonna show you guys a simple example of how to do this and you can kind of apply this to a variety of situations. So down here I have a scanner set up. Basically all I'm doing is I'm using this scanner to get a number from the user. So I'm basically saying, hey, print out a number, basically getting the next double that they input. So I'm saying keyboard input dot next double. This will accept a number as an input and I'm storing that number inside of this num double variable. Then I'm just printing it out. So it's a super simple program. I'm just gonna run it. And over here it says enter a number so I can enter in a double like 3.908 and it just prints it out onto the screen, awesome. So we have a nice little program here, but here's the problem. If I was to run this program again, and instead of putting a number in here, I was to put like a letter. So God forbid I put something other than a number. When I click enter, we're gonna get this exception. So you can see down here, the program actually stopped running. So this caused the program to completely terminate. We didn't print out the number. We didn't store it inside the variable. The program just ended, right? Our program blew up, it's done. And it says over here, exception in thread main, java.util.inputmismatch exception. Basically what this means is Java threw an exception, which means something happened that Java didn't like, that Java couldn't handle, and the program had to terminate. And in our case, it was an input mismatch exception, which basically means they entered in a string when they should have entered in a double. So if they entered in a double, everyone's good, everyone's happy. But because they entered in a string, uh-uh, Java can't handle that. And it can't handle it because Java was supposed to store this inside of a double, but it can't store a string inside of a double, so the program broke. And this is a problem. This is a real problem in our programs. Um, if you're writing a program and uh, you know somebody enters in a string when they're supposed to en enter in a double, you don't want your program to blow up, right? You don't want it to just completely stop working. What you wanna do is be able to recognize like, hey, this person entered in the wrong type of input. Let's tell them that and then we can go off and do something else. And I'm gonna show you guys how we can do something like that. So how we could catch one of these exceptions. We're gonna have to use something called the try catch blocks. And basically the way we set this up is I just say try, I make an open and closed curly bracket, and then down here I just wanna say catch. And catch is going to take a parameter, so we're gonna give it some open and closed parentheses. Inside of these parentheses, I just wanna say exception, and I'm just gonna call this E. So basically an exception is getting passed into this open and closed parentheses. If that doesn't make total sense what we're doing here, just stick with me and it'll make sense in a second. So down here, I'm saying system.out.println and I'm getting the number. What I can do is I can actually put this stuff, or actually I just wanna put these two lines down here inside of this try block. And I'm always gonna ask them to get the number. So we'll put that up here. Inside of this try block, inside of these open and closed curly brackets, I'm actually asking for the user's input and then I'm printing it out. And what this is gonna do is it's basically gonna allow us to do this and if our program blows up when we're doing this, in other words, if an exception gets called when we're doing this, then we'll execute the code down here in this catch block. So I'm actually gonna copy this and instead of printing out the number, we're just gonna print out invalid input. Okay, so now that we have these try catch blocks set up, I'm gonna show you what we can do with them. So if I was to come back over to my program and recreate the situation that happened before, so I'm just gonna enter in a letter instead of entering in a double. Now, instead of our program terminating and just completely blowing up and we're done, now it just says invalid input. So it's able to handle what just happened, right? It's able to handle this situation. So that's the beauty of try catch blocks is they let you look for errors and catch them 
And then when your program throws an exception, we can just print something else out. So we can give the user a message like, hey, you put in the wrong stuff, how dare you? We can also get more specific with these. And I actually wanna to talk to you guys about this exception E over here. Exception is what's called a class in Java. And it, for the most part, it's just like a special type of data type. So we have like strings, we have integers, we have booleans, and exception is very similar to that. It's just, it's storing some information inside of it. And the exception is basically gonna tell us what went wrong. So if I was to come down here inside of this print line statement, I could just print out E. Now E is the name of the exception that got passed in. If I print out E, it's gonna tell me what went wrong. So if I typed an A over here again, instead of printing out invalid input, it's gonna tell me what exception was thrown. So it's gonna say java.util.input mismatch exception got thrown. So this is actually a pretty interesting message, right? It's telling me what went wrong. It's telling me what type of exception was thrown. It was an input mismatch exception. So let me show you guys another example of using something like this. So down here, I actually have some code that I commented out and I basically just uh, created a, an array. So I created an array and I gave it three elements. So I just gave it three numbers. So it's just one, two, and three. And then what I did was I tried to print out the fifth element inside of this array. Now this array only has three elements, right? And they're at index positions zero, one, and two. If I try to print out the fifth element in this array or the element at index position five, my program is gonna blow up and I'll show you guys what's gonna happen. So before I even get to enter in the, the input, actually, let me put this down here. I'm gonna run my program and it's immediately gonna blow up and we're gonna get another exception. You can see over here it says exception in thread main, java.ling.arrayindex out of bounds exception. So before we were getting an input mismatch exception, now we're getting this array index out of bounds exception. This is a different type of exception that we can use in our program. And Java basically told us like, hey, there's no array position at this index. So Java couldn't handle that and the program ended up terminating. It ended up throwing an exception. So there's different types of exceptions for different situations that you're gonna get into in Java. And actually what we can do is we can catch different types of exceptions. So for example, if I was to take this line of code right here that's printing out nums five, right? It's printing out that fifth index and this is the piece of code that breaks. If I was to put this down here inside of this try block, so I'm putting it down here, this is also gonna get caught by this exception. So we're also just gonna print out E. So now when I run my program, instead of breaking, it's just gonna say java.lang.index out of bounds exception five. So the program didn't explode, it didn't terminate, we didn't throw an exception, it just printed out what the exception was. So if I come down here and I just use this exception data type, if I just say exception, it'll catch any exception that's put inside of these try blocks. But if I want, instead of just putting this exception, I can also add in specific types of exceptions, right? So for example, down here, we have two pieces of code that are gonna break this program, right? We have this system.out.print line that's trying to print out an invalid array index. We also have this line of code right here. If the user enters in something that's not a double, that's also gonna cause an exception. But remember, these are causing two different types of exceptions. The first one is causing an array index out of bounds exception. This one is causing a input mismatch exception. There are two different things that are going wrong. There's two completely different reasons why a Java program blew up. Right? When I just use this general exception word down here, this'll catch any exception under the sun. It'll catch any possible you know, situation where Java threw an exception, this is gonna catch it. But what happens if I have two pieces of code that are throwing different exceptions and depending on the exception that gets thrown, I wanna do different things? Well, I can actually specify what type of exception I wanna catch. So for example, this is just catching like any old exception under the sun. But what if I wanted to specifically catch this array index out of bounds exception? Well, what I can do is I can actually include a catch block that will catch this specific error. So I can copy this. 
this big long name over here. And instead of printing out exception over here, I'm just gonna put array index out of bounds exception. And this is going to specifically catch this situation right here where the number explodes. So now if I run my program, the same thing is gonna happen, right? So it's just gonna do exactly what it did before. It'll be able to catch that array index out of bounds exception. But if I got rid of this line, so I'm just gonna comment this out. So this is no longer gonna be inside of my program and I mess up the keyboard input. So I'm gonna come over here and we'll mess up this keyboard input so I'll put another letter. This isn't, a, this isn't catching this exception anymore because this catch block only catches array index out of bounds exceptions. That's all it can do, right? It can't catch the input mismatch exception. All it can do is catch the index array out of bounds exception. So you can actually include multiple catch blocks in here. So for example, I could say like another catch block and now we can include that other error. So for example, our error over here was input mismatch exception. So I'm gonna copy this guy and I'll throw this into this second catch block. And again, we'll just call it E. So now this is gonna be able to catch this input mismatch exception. And you'll see I'm getting an error here. So sometimes for some of these um, exception types, you're gonna have to import them. That basically means you have to tell Java that you wanna use them. And that's only for some of them. And if I'm on Eclipse, I can just come down here and click import. And you'll see up here at the top of the file, it imported java.util.input mismatch exception. So now I can put some code over here. So I can just system.out.println and we'll say invalid. And what this will do is it'll be able to catch that invalid input. So now when I run this program, I can enter in a letter, so I can enter in the wrong thing here, and it just says invalid input. So if you wanna catch specific types of exceptions, then you can specify those specific types of exceptions inside of these catch blocks. Or you can do what we did before, which was just use, instead of one of these, you can just say like exception, and this will catch any possible exception that you can have. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll, catch you know maybe like two or three specific types of exceptions and then over here they'll just use that general exception and this will just catch anything else so you know you can have all of these so first it'll check if it's an array index out of bounds then it'll check if it's a mismatch input and then if it's neither of those it'll just throw a general exception error so basically the use of exceptions is just so your program doesn't blow up Right? If you're writing a, you know, a Java program that's gonna be running for you know, months and months at a time, you don't want it to blow up no matter what. So you always wanna make sure that it's able to handle whatever gets thrown at it. And you can use these try catch blocks to do that. So in addition to exceptions, there's also another type of problem that can go wrong in our programs, which is called an error. And the main difference between an exception and an error is that an error is like really serious. So if you have an exception in your program, for example, like when the user inputs a letter instead of a number, it's not serious, right? Nothing is like actually going wrong in the program. It's just, you know, something happened that Java couldn't necessarily handle. But in addition to an exception, there's also something called an error. And an error is generally something that you don't want to catch because an error means that something really went wrong. Like something is like seriously wrong with the program and there's no you know, possible way that we can recover. Now that doesn't mean that you can't catch an error in your programs, but Java would say that any reasonable application shouldn't be trying to catch an error. So the errors are just abnormal conditions, you know, things that you really don't want to happen in your program no matter what. But I'm gonna show you guys uh, basically how to handle them anyway. I, I just wanted to talk to them, so, talk about them so you're aware of them. So instead of saying exception down here, I could say error. And this would basically allow me to catch any errors that get thrown. Now you can also call something called throwable. So I could say throwable and basically throwable is gonna catch either an error or an exception. So if you wanna catch any errors and any exceptions that occur inside your program, if you say throwable, that'll basically just catch anything. So remember, when we just said exception there, that caught any exception that could be thrown. If we would say error here, this will catch any error that gets thrown. 
And there's also some specific errors, just like we had specific exceptions. Um, but if you say throwable, this will catch like any error or any exception. So basically like anything that goes wrong with the program, this will catch it. Um, but again, Java recommends like on the Java docs, it recommends that you don't, any reasonable application doesn't try to catch errors, but you should definitely try to catch exceptions. So that's the basics of exceptions. And we talked a little bit about errors. We talked a little bit about throwable. Um, there's a lot more to kind of discover with these things. Obviously you, you can learn about all the different, you know, specific exceptions, but this kind of gives you an idea of how to implement them in your programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.